part of our ceremony was going to take place outside. Needless to say, the inclement weather is forbidding, you know, people from going out there. I don't want people to be in a torrential rain. The police, however, will go outside to raise the flag in spite of the weather. And in between, they'll be listening to remarks from our commandant of the Marines and the uh, American Legion while we're waiting for the final taps and also Mason Grace and the Bad Pipers and our closing prayer. So just to give you a heads up before we get started. I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us here today for the 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony for the third year in a row. It is difficult for us to return to a time in our lives that brought so much pain and suffering. But we must revisit this devastating time to remember the innocent lives that were taken that day. We must not allow to fade from our memories the heroism of all those who risked and lost their lives trying to save others. Friends, families, strangers, first responders who perished and survivors have all become a part of our hearts, minds, and lives forever. In the midst of this terrible tragedy, we witnessed amazing acts of heroism, love, kindness, and unity that showed us what is possible. I pray on this day, more than anything else, that we carry with us this possibility. I pray that all the families who have lost their loved ones and those who are still suffering from the after effects of illness and injury don't suffer further in the belief that nothing good came from all the sacrifice. I pray that we carry this possibility forward in our daily lives for the sake of ourselves, our children, our children's children, that forgiveness, love, courage, unity, and generosity of spirit is not only possible, but can become a universal reality. So I ask everyone here today to make a silent pledge to embody the possibility and adopt a new reality from this day forward, inclusive of the values displayed amongst all people, all people, on that tragic day. That it not be because of a catastrophic event, but rather a way of life that we, with one another, will embrace forgiveness, love, courage, and unity, and generosity of spirit as God intended. God bless us all, and thank you very much. I'd like the Reverend Cherie Ford to please join me here. She'll be doing the invocation. Thank you. May we all bow for a word of prayer. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, the ruler and creator of heaven and earth, Lord God, we come before you on this solemn occasion, remembering those who were innocently slain, remembering those who responded, the first responders, to the policemen, to the emergency team, to the National Guard, to all of those inside of the buildings who helped others to evacuate. We come remembering, Father, those who selflessly sacrificed and gave their lives that others might live. And to those who are yet alive, but they carry within them the memory the scars, God, we come lifting them up before you. We come lifting up the families of so many loved ones 
who lost mothers and fathers and daughters and sons and so many other relatives. Lord, we don't want to ever forget. We don't want to allow the families to think that we do not remember. But Lord, we come praying that you will strengthen their hearts and give them courage. Allow them to keep hoping and trusting in you, knowing, Father, that their memories will forever live on in our hearts. Their memories will forever live on in our communities. To the many who are yet alive, who are still shedding tears of sorrow. Father God, we pray that you will touch them and give them your peace, allowing them to know that even you, Father, have, have not forgotten. And so as we come here today to remember we pray, Father God, that this service, O oh Lord, will be pleasing in your sight and that it would be uplifting and encouraging to those who are here, to every hearer under the sound of my voice. Father, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy that you have kept America even in the midst, and you have allowed us to build and to look forward, but never to forget. And so we thank you, God. Bless now this ceremony as we call on your name and remember those who have gone on before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like everybody to stand for the flag salute. Carry. Ready, cut, forward, march. Return! Come! 
Ready, go. Forward, march. today is to educate those that don't remember. Those four young people who brought out this flag so remarkably just a few moments ago probably weren't, there was in trouble in the ages, but probably weren't alive. This young and beautiful child I met today certainly wasn't all three years of her. We've got an obligation to remind people of not only how we felt but what we have to do. And those obligations include remembering the heroes of the day. Those who wear uniforms in front of me here, in front of all of you each day. We don't have to look on a Marvel movie or an animated cartoon or a football field for a hero. They're right here wearing uniforms. Because when the call comes, they hear it, they listen, they respond. And heroes don't respond just for huge events, they respond in everyday events why it's an honor to be in front of all of you to wear a uniform today. I continually wonder what our obligation is. I know it's to the survivors, as the mayor mentioned in her opening comments, to make sure as we look at each time, we see the faces and we watch and we're brought back. And we wonder what their lives would have been 17 years later, what contributions were we cheated out of, 
from those people who are all they did was sort of work that deck. We have an obligation to the survivors to make sure that their comfort is there. But most importantly, we have an obligation to each other. Because for all of us, it is about being in this together. And we understand on September 11th and September 12th that the small things really don't matter. That when a building goes down, you watch thousands of people run from smoke and glass. 17 years later, fight the effects of being on a pile because they had the heroism to be there, they didn't care so much about whether there was an air mask or something covering their face, but it was about who they could save and when they could save them. Our obligations today are to remember, to take care of those who need our help, and to be prepared, as always, for the next. I was at a, uh, a hillside event yesterday. Uh, the fire chief in Hillside read this poem. You might find this hard to believe that I'm not a poem guy. Uh, but I thought it captured 9-11 so well. It was written post 9-11. Uh, it's, it's author is anonymous, and I hope you don't mind. It's a brief poem, and I'll read it in closure because it reminds me of the day. But most importantly, before I close, I want to say thank you to those in uniform, to those who inspire us each and every day. My friend Tom Moore was a Port Authority police officer that day. And he talked about how on his roll call in the morning, and how many were there, and the next roll call only five came back. And he knows those names. Remember the bagpipes? All those services, cars, all those things that brought us. So let me close with this. I stare in total disbelief. I stare in total disbelief, heart torn with instant grief. Plumes of black smoke fill the air, marking the building no longer there. I close my eyes, I want to pray, but my mind doesn't know what to say. Much like Pearl Harbor so many years ago, so many gone with one fatal blow. There are no words to explain. There are no words to ease the pain. To those who gave their lives, mothers, fathers, husbands, and wives, to all who, lives, who all who lives today did cease, may your soul find instant peace. We will honor you and the life you gave as a patriot of the land of the free and the home of the brave. May we always be. tragedies that unfolded 17 years ago on September 11th. On that Tuesday morning, thousands of lives are lost and unrecognizably altered. And since that day, not one has gone by where we haven't missed the almost 3,000 individuals who were taken from us. We continue to pray for the families of those who lost their lives on that tragic day and for those who have suffered illnesses and injury in the aftermath. There's nothing more honorable than serving one's country, and we are so grateful to our fire, police, fire departments, police departments, and first responders across this nation that work tirelessly day after day to keep us safe. As Robert Kennedy said, it is from numberless, diverse acts of courage and belief that human history is shaped. And on 9-11, there was numerous diverse acts of courage taken by countless individuals within the NYPD and the NY and all the other fire um, departments and police and first responders. And there was also a number of individuals that were everyday people and that day became heroic because they saw that their service was needed and they went to hell. There was individuals who traveled hours and hours just to come because they knew America needed them. We are thankful for the service of those individuals, for the service of the police officers and firemen and first responders across this country that put themselves in harm's way every day in order to keep us safe. 
it is that moment in history that you wonder, where were you? And then who was with you? And when you had to, for the first time, think about it, wonder, where was your relative? And call to find out, were they safe or were they there in that tragedy? In Union County this week, we mourned our neighbors who passed away while celebrating their children who we watched grow up into remarkable young individuals. Every day they made their family, their community, and their country proud. While 9-11 may have changed the way we look at the world, it failed to change the faith that we have in the spirit of individuals coming together. Within minutes of the attacks on the World Trade Center, Center Americans came together and helped each other, regardless of race or religion. No incentive is needed to bring out the best in us. Our faith in each other's humanity got us through that day and the following months and years. This is America. We must never forget what occurred. May God bless America, and may God bless each and every one of you.
The speakers prior to me pretty much said what had to be said. The only thing that I would add to that is <clears throat> never forget. Thank you. I'd like to invite our new interim superintendent of schools, Dr. James Baker. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. It's uh, definitely a pleasure for me to be here. It's an honor for me to be with all these first uh, first defenders who uh, and the responders who uh, go through uh, danger and life threatening issues on a, on a daily basis. Uh, I'd like to say my grandfather was a, was a policeman, so he lived next door to me, so I certainly understand what uh, you do. And, and uh, also my brother-in-law was a fireman in Plainfield, so I know those kinds of issues that they have to deal with. And he was there during the riots and has to be uh, in secure areas on a regular basis. I would like to thank the mayor for inviting me, and also Keanu Jones, of our board members, who I really uh, was surprised today at what a beautiful voice she has. Uh, so often she's talking to me, and it, it's not quite as beautiful, but it's always <laughs> nice. And I also want to introduce my, uh, my assistant superintendent, your assistant superintendent, uh, Dr. Perez. She's here with, with me. Uh, I am very, very pleased to know that our schools have a Marine ROTC. I have a, a, being an Army. Uh, our cavalry officer, uh, served airborne and uh, served in Germany. Uh, I certainly have that background. And also, when 9-11 occurred, I joined the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Uh, I was up in Saddlebrook. We lost many people there, and I thought, this is a time to really get involved so we can be involved to, to help uh, the communities and make people safer. Uh, I also was uh, talking to the police chief to know that they, as a junior, uh, police uh, group, and I, I salute that. I, I firmly believe that these are the kinds of programs that really form the, the children so they can become constructive members of society and they can really make a, a, a way in their life to, to improve what their, their fate is. And that's what our schools are all about. And uh, we're going to make them uh, much safer. We're going to talk to the chief about coordinating our activities. Uh, and I'm, I'm, uh, this is what I do anyway. This is, this is something that the schools have to uh, visit, visit Columbine and some of these other sites where there, there are problems and there are ways that we can help to make it safer. And that's exactly what we're going, we're going to do. And as I uh, echo what was said before, never forget what happened to us is, is a tragedy and visiting the site at the 9-11. It really brings home how important it is for us to have a safe environment for our children. That's what we're going to be doing here while I'm here. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to bring up a gentleman who, if you pass outside, you will see that we have a case that's filled with some uh, very poignant pictures that were taken at, during 9-11, at the 9-11 site. Uh, sometimes we tend to forget about the people that have to go back to that site and after the last survivors are rescued and actually do the cleanup and uh, reconstruct what was devastating. And so this gentleman, one of our volunteer OEM coordinators and also the person who was at that 9-11 site helping others to resurrect what was destroyed, I'd like to introduce you to Juan Sierra, my neighbor, and a proud member of this Roselle community. Would you please come forward? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, it'll be short and sweet. Uh, one thing that we, 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 we're, we're losing a lot of uh, our responders that have answered the call that day. And one thing that also we, we, we need to do is, um, a lot of politicians left, but uh, serve this country and that has uh, come to the court. And uh, 
not to kick my homeland, but sometimes they have a tendency to forget who answers the call. We have a lot more responders that are dying today of the after effects of what was there. And uh, personally, it was a cloud that I wouldn't be able to see the gentleman to the back of the room if you were standing in the center or on the pile. You couldn't see too far in front of your hand. And uh, the heat was overwhelming. And uh, never mind all the plastics and asbestos and whatever else was the cocktail that was there. But uh, we answered the call, we went in. There wasn't too much of anything to have it and to, to look with, you know. Uh, there was advanced respirators, that didn't, none of that stuff got there until a couple of days later. We went in, took off your shirt, started sweating, and you did what you had to do. Uh, a lot of, a lot, a lot of gentlemen and, uh, are, are starting to go little by little. You know, cancers and stuff like that takes an incubation period. Uh, that's that's where we at now, and uh, just hope that we don't forget about this. And then also, if everybody that's in this room takes a Sunday to go to the museum and just walk around and look, and also we will never forget the people. It's not just you know turn it into a once once a year holiday, not to say a holiday, but an event. Remember, remember, remember. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to invite OEM volunteer Cesar Perez to come forward. Thank you for representing our other Office of Emergency Management. Thank you so much. Three hundred and forty three firefighters, <coughs> sixty law enforcement, eight EMT paramedics, two thousand five hundred and sixty three civilians. Seven years ago, the total number of lives lost was two thousand nine hundred and seventy four and counting. On August thirty first, two thousand one, I resigned my position as an operations supervisor. I was responsible for the planning and coordination of letters and packages for the World Trade. About 25 employees were assigned to the World Trade Center. On September 10th, after taking my exit into interviewing physical at Seven World Trade, I took a former employee to lunch at the Rotunda. If you lay back and look into the cloud, the towers went on forever. September 12th was a long day <coughs> as we searched through the countless pounds of rubble and debris. We stopped the salute as each victim was recovered and passed hand to hand with the utmost respect. The silence was deafening. Several years later, I ran into that former employee. He thanked me. On that unforgettable day, my successor delayed the delivery to the World Trade Center, ensuring that no employee was in the building. Sadly, this is not where the story ends. 2,974 is not the number of victims end. It is now 525 firefighters and EMTs. 200 and 16 law enforcement. Roughly 90,000 people have applied for the World Trade Center Health Program. Nearly 20,000 have been approved. Roughly 10,000 first responders have a form of cancer attributed to the internet. <laughs> ICS Perez have Hashimoto's syndrome, which can be attributed to 9-11. To say 9-11 was devastating, 
is an understatement. It continues to affect thousands over a decade later and will continue for years to come. Thank you.
very important to me because we lost good people for no good reasons. As a pastor, I always ask this question, why? And to save my life, I don't have an answer. And I'm sure many of you don't. But this is what I normally tell people when they ask me the why question. Why is important to us now, but once we get to the other side of the Jordan, why is really irrelevant. How we live our life right now is what's important. Obama said, because of 911, we have no reason to hate. And I would say to all Rosellians, and to everyone that's assembled here today, that we need to work together. We need to build together. We need to love together. And we need to fight together because we all live together. Thank you. I'd like to, of course, thank our the council people, commissioners, the board of ed, and we have people here, our um, citizens who came out today, some of which lost people during that terrible time. And they're here today to share the remembrance. And as much as I said before, it's painful to go through the memory of this. We would be remiss if we didn't take the time to honor all of you and what you do, especially the first responders, also our uh, Marines, our future service people, the ROTC, the police, the fire, the OEM, and all those people who didn't have any title that went down there, as the Reverend said, to just offer their support. And so uh, that's why we're here today, is to offer our support. And I'd like to bring up, because of the inclement weather, we were going to go outside for this portion of the ceremony, but because of the bad weather, the police are going to go out and, and they're going to raise the flag. And while they are raising the 9-11 flag, we're going to ask the Commandant, Kelly, from the American Legion, if he will please step forward and say a few words sure. while that is being done. A couple of utility tools and things like that to try to head down that way and see what I can do to help, but also ostensibly to look for my wife. Thank goodness, because more than 3,000 people weren't so lucky. My wife went one way and I went the other way. We ended up passing each other. Um, in, in the cloud, if you will. But when the buildings collapsed, I said to myself, I may have just watched you know, my wife die. So you know, those sort of in instincts kick in and you, you, do, you do what you need to do. We heard a lot of talk about heroes here. Um, a lot of people were walking the other way. Those, those images that I know you guys saw on, on the news and things like that, there were people coming out of that, that cloud too as, as uh, Juan, Juan and Steve were talking about. We, we, you got to remember that cloud from that damage went all the way across both rivers, went into Brooklyn, went all the way over here to Jersey, went all the way up to Canal Street, out past the Statue of Liberty, you know, and it, it hung there for a long time. It's probably three stories high. We, we thank our first responders. I have to say this, I apologize to some other veterans, but there is a disproportionate amount of Marines in our first responders who passed away that day. People who run towards the fire. People who run towards the danger to help people out who are fleeing the other way. And we talk a lot about heroes. A lot of people offer praise to veterans and our first responders as heroes, rightfully so. But when we're talking about conflicts and wars and battles and tragedies like this, let's be honest, the heroes for people with them to come home. I know Red likes to say that a lot, and, and I support him on that. And also, the he a hero, someone who acts heroic, by definition, is not somebody that's 10 feet tall and bulletproof and has an S in the chest. A hero is somebody that's aware of the danger that is scared to the bottom of their soul and still runs into the fire. Um, I worked on the pile that morning. I missed my wife, didn't find her. Worked down on the pile that day. I kept flashing my military ID to you know, be allowed to help. 
He tried to triage people um, and all that damage, like the gentleman both said, you, you couldn't see very well. Unfortunately, and fortunately, there weren't a lot of people to triage. People don't maybe remember or know, 10,000 people worked in each of those towers. That's 20,000 people just in those two buildings. Not to mention all the other smaller and smaller 50 story buildings or whatever. Um, the fact that, you know, there weren't tens of thousands of people killed in that situation is a matter of luck, but also a matter of training, God's will, if you will, and other such things. Um, I worked, I spent the day down there working with you know, my little painter's mask. You know, the, the mayor, Rudy Giuliani, was walking around throwing people masks and stuff. There's a lot of images I, I have from that day. Eventually, I needed to take both the mental and physical break and kind of walked away. I decided to walk back home and see if I could get a shower. We were all covered, you know, three inches thick and all that white dust. Um, finally, my antique cell phone rang, and it was my wife. Thank God. She was in Queens. She walked across the bridge with a lot of her fellow paralegals, and they walked each other home. Not to echo what the bishop that Paul was saying, those are ladies of all different creeds and colors. All walking, they've probably never been to each other's houses. All taking the time to walk each other to their homes. About five something at night that evening, all the cells, I'm so glad she's alive. She's glad I'm alive, didn't know where I'd been all day, working down on the pile. Um, and they wouldn't let her across the bridge to come back in. At that time, the National Guard was already set up. There were 50 calibers and F-16 circling overhead. I walked from downtown up to 53rd Street, got to the edge of that bridge and flashed an ID, explained the situation to the Sergeant of the Guard, the National Guard, and the, and the police department that was there. And I was able to walk across the bridge and escort my wife back over. Straight out of the movies, you know, meet my wife right in the middle of a bridge over a river, covered in dust on such an awful day, but yet at the same time to be so grateful. Um, you have that survivor's guilt too. That people talk a lot about that. How, we talk a lot about that in the service. How did I make it and the other brothers and sisters around me did not. Other images that stick with me a little bit. Um, walking around in the city that day, technology was gone. There were no cars driving, there was no subway, there was no cell phone, electronics didn't work. Everybody had to bust out their old school battery powered transistor radios and put the, put the rabbit ears up. And I can remember people huddling around the taxis and around the little delis. And I wish I had, I had been more thoughtful to take more pictures of that. But the image, the rainbows that were around those <coughs> transistor radios, colors of creeds, skin color, didn't matter. Uh, businesses and stores opening up their doors to allow people to shelter, people passing around, water bottles, and things like that to anybody that passed. 9 11 taught us a lot of important lessons. And you know, that New York minute, we yelled at the dog and we're mad about some little something, and it's hard for us to slow down and, and try to remember what that togetherness was like. I'm guilty of it myself. I got two little girls. This was, this was, this was a serious obviously. So body parts, you know, we have to cover our faces, we have to really, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just, just run. And uh, at that point, I think everybody started thinking what just happened. Uh, and uh, we started realizing so serious. I walked, uh, I would say, about two blocks when the first thing came down. Uh, I was one of those people that had to run, being chased by, uh, you know, by the, the dust, the smoke coming from the building. Uh, somehow I made it home. I actually had to go to the Queens that night. Uh, eventually found my way home. Now, I got married. October 6, 2001. So this happened September 11, about 25 days. Uh, so the other side of the story was my fiance then. 
uh, watching TV was a walk, watching TV and saw the view and uh, the plane eat the view. And she said, well, in my, yeah, it's a walk. Uh, obviously, she had to leave work. Uh, she broke down. She, was, she had to, you know, find, you know, encourage her to go back home. The, the co-worker, she went back home. Watching TV, trying to figure out, obviously, they were calling me, the phone went walking. I was trying to call everybody at their phone number. 